finally wasn't working. Okay. With centroids and medians. Okay. So let me start by talking about what a median is. Okay. So a median goes from one vertice of the triangle down to the middle of the opposite side, and it's going to split it up into congruent parts. So you can see here that these two sides are congruent. With the median, there is nothing specific about what angle measure it makes when it meets the other side. It can make a 90 degree angle. It doesn't have to. So a median just means that it comes from the vertice of one side and goes to the middle of the opposite side, to the midpoint of the opposite side. And you're going to do this from all the vertices. You can see this one goes down to here. Then you can see this vertice goes down to here, right here, splitting it into equal parts. So then the point where all the medians come together is called a centroid. So this is a centroid where all the medians intersect. That's their point of concurrency. Point of concurrency is where they all come together. Now with centroids, um, there is a special relationship. So that's why I have this two thirds up here. And that relationship is that from the vertice to the centroid is two thirds the entire length from the vertice to the opposite side. So from the vertice to the centroid is two thirds and from the centroid to the opposite side is one third. Another way you can look at it is that this top line is two times larger than this bottom line. And you can think about it either way, okay? So centroids is medians. Now, talking about points of concurrency. So if I have an acute triangle like this, and I'm gonna do the best, you guys know I can't draw a straight line, but here is a median, wow, that was a bad one. Um, here, oh, that again. Here is a median and here is another median. So here you can see the centroid comes inside. On a right triangle, there's a median there is a median, and here is a median. Point of concurrency is on the inside. Here's a median, here's a median, and here's a median. That didn't go through the middle, but you get the point. So for four centroids, the points of concurrency are always inside the triangle. So then the next kind we have is orthocenter, which is made up by altitudes. And so altitudes are just the height of the triangle. And actually, let me see, can I turn this around? Oh, I can turn it around a little bit. You're gonna see. Like, so here you can see the altitude is straight, goes from the vertice straight down to the bottom. It has to make a 90 degree angle. And so that is an altitude. Well, so then when I turn, just so you can see different sides, I think sometimes it helps just to see it different, uh, from different perspectives. So this is an altitude, goes from the top straight down, forming a 90 degree angle. And then I'll keep going. And you can see right here, we have this altitude going from the top, going straight down. So altitude is like height. You know, if you're in an airplane, altitude's how high you are in the air. If you're in the mountains, there's altitude. So um, so altitude is just height. It's just the height of the triangle. But because there's three sides, there's going to be three different altitudes. And where these altitudes come together is called the orthocenter. Okay. Now talking about points of concurrency, um, here is the altitude on a right triangle. Here's, I'm trying to there. And here is here. Notice they're all on the inside. On this right triangle, here is an altitude. If I turn it, here's another altitude, and then there's another altitude here. Actually, that was bad. That was bad kind of. Um, there's an altitude here. So you can see these all come together on the vertex of the right angle part of the right triangle. Okay? So the point of concurrency of the altitudes on a right triangle are the vertex of the right angle. And then for this obtuse triangle, it would be easier if I could. Um, this is, I'm not drawing this one very good because this one really goes like this and this one goes, oh gosh, it's really hard to draw from the side. But anyway, so this one, you can see that they don't intersect, but if I kept them going, they would eventually intersect right here, which is outside. So these obtuse 
is going to meet on the outside of the angle. So the altitudes or the orthocenter is going to be outside of the obtuse triangle. Okay. All right, so then we have circumcenter, and circumcenter is made up of perpendicular bisectors. And so I'm just going to look at the perpendicular bisectors first, okay? So this is a perpendicular bisector, and technically it could go, it doesn't have to, that was terrible drawing. It, it technically goes straight through here, right? Because it goes straight up, it's perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. Um, and then it bisects, so it's splitting that side up into two equal parts. So that's a perpendicular bisector. Here's the perpendicular bisector for the side BC, and then here's the perpendicular bisector for the side BA. So here, um, what's important to remember, the math that you're going to use here, is that the distance from the circumcenter to each vertice is the same. So from the circumcenter to each vertice is the same distance. Okay, that's what I wrote here, to each vertex. Okay. Then the other thing is to think about, and I'll try to draw this as best I can, is that you could draw a, a circle. I can inscribe, or I can circumscribe a circle around the triangle, actually let me, see if I can get that to, match up. that's pretty good. Okay, so here, the circumcenter of this circle is the same as the center, I'm sorry, the center of the circle is the same thing as the circumcenter of the triangle. So the circumcenter of a triangle is the same thing as the center of a circle if the triangle is in, inserted into a circle. Okay, so, but notice, I've got it so that the circle hits all the vertices. I'm not talking about just any side circle. You want it to hit all the vertices. So talking about points of concurrency of perpendicular bisectors. And so I'm gonna try to draw these. Okay, so here, there's a perpendicular bisector. There's a perpendicular bisector, and there is a perpendicular bisector. So you can see here their point of concurrency is inside the triangle. All right, so for the right, okay, so perpendicular, actually let's change color. Okay, perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector, which I'm not doing a very good job of, because I know what's supposed to happen. And then a, it's not working out perfectly like I wanted it to, but <laughs> because I can't, it's supposed to meet on the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Okay, so for um, for right triangles, when you're talking about the circumcenter, it's going to be on the midpoint of the triangle. If I had a ruler and I was making this all even, it would look better. But but you get the point. And then for obtuse triangles, the point of concurrency is supposed to be outside, but I'm not doing a very good job of showing that, am I? Let's see. There we go, I did a better job there. All right, so the point of concurrency um, for circumcenters is outside the obtuse triangle. And then we have incenters, which are made up by angle bisectors. And I think you guys do good with these, with uh, noticing when they are angle bisectors. It does help having the, the symbols in the corner. Um, so where the angle bisectors intersect is called an incenter. Now here, what you need to remember is that it's equal distance to each side. So I've got, I've got an angle bisector, angle bisector, angle bisector. So they come in the middle, they meet at the in center. 
Well, the math here is that the distance from the end center to the side, the shortest distance to the side, is all the same. So if this was 5, if xm was 5, then ym is 5 and zm is 5. They're all 5, okay? Um, here, on that other one where we were doing a circle around the outside of the triangle with in center, if you put a circle inside the triangle, in center, let me make sure, okay, might take me a minute to, it's pretty close, we'll take it. Um, so with the in center here, the in center of the triangle is the same thing as the center of the circle. And again, notice I tried to make it, it's not perfect, but the circle goes all the way around and it touches all the sides. All right, so then when we're doing points of concurrency here for in centers, you know, you've got, and I'll try to draw here. So they all come in the middle here. Let's see, angle bisector. Here, they come inside. All right, so the in center, um, the points of concurrency for the in center is always inside the triangle. Now, the last thing we talked about for this unit was mid segments. And the thing about a mid segment is if you have the midpoint of one side connected to the midpoint of the other side, it creates a relationship where these two segments are congruent because it's the midpoint of the left side. Then the midpoint of the right side, these two segments are congruent. Okay. Then the other thing that it tells you is it tells us that these parts are parallel, that these two sides are parallel. And then it also tells us that the length of this is half the length of this or the bottom piece is twice as big as the middle piece. So those are just some important things to consider um, about centers of triangles and that you can use all of this to help you find missing angle measures and missing um, side lengths. I will also tell you with mid-segment, because you're dealing with these parallel lines here, that this is where you're going to start dealing with like alternate interior angles, like these two angles are congruent or corresponding angles that like um, this angle corresponds to this angle. Anytime you have parallel lines, you know you're going to have to kind of start using those relationships there. Okay?